The Battle of the Neck in August 1915, despite being a small and momentary engagement, was one of the most savage and one-sided contests in military history. Remembered for courage, incompetence, sacrifice and obstinate leadership. The Gallipoli Campaign of the First World War was designed by Britain's First Lord of the Admiralty, Winston Churchill, to capture the Dardanelles Strait. The strategy, however, to open a supply route through the Bosphorus to ally Russia's Black Sea ports had bogged down into a stalemate. Since the invasion of the peninsula in April 1915, German ally, Turkey, had resolutely defended their homeland from British and French forces for five months in a determined arm wrestle. A plan for a breakout of the bridgehead, known as the August Offensive, was devised by the British. It involved an opening of a new front with British troops at Suvla Bay to the north of the Anzac sector with engagements by mainly Australian troops at the Lone Pine and Neck positions in support of a New Zealand attack on the summit of the strategic Chunuk Bear. The Neck was a saddle ridge connecting a plateau called Russell's Top, occupied by the Australians, and a hill named Baby 700, occupied by the Ottoman Turks. Neck, an Afrikaans word for mountain pass, was adopted by veterans of the Boer War and was a perfect description for the bottleneck created on the ridge. Australian and Turkish troops faced each other over the slight upward slope with the Turks enjoying the high ground. The area of no man's land, approximately the area of two tennis courts, was tiny, with only 45 metres separating the enemy front lines at some points. The Turks had another name for this place. After the heavy loss of life sustained in their own counter-attacks in May 1915, they named the barren patch of ground Cesaret Tepe, the Hill of Valour. They defended the position with multiple machine gun crews from the front and at the flanks. The Neck, or the Hill of Valour, was a fortress. The orders for the engagement, slated for the dawn of the 7th of August, involved the heavy bombardment of the Turkish trenches at the Neck, followed by the rushing of four waves of troops from the 3rd Light Horse Brigade to capture the position and support the New Zealand attack on Chunuk Bear further up the ridge. Unbelievably, the orders also included that men charged with unloaded 303 rifles and fixed bayonets. Potentially, they were charging into machine gun and rifle fire with glorified spears. In the pre-dawn of 7 August 1915, troopers of the 8th and 10th Light Horse Regiments waited expectantly for the two-hour bombardment to lift at 4.30am. Buoyed by the success of the infantry, in their attack at Lone Pine the night before. As the first wave of 150 Victorians of the 8th Regiment were positioned in the front line, unexpectedly the bombardment stopped at 4.23, seven minutes short. Confusion gripped the Australians as the Turks filed back into the trenches and readied their machine guns. At the appointed time, the 8th Light Horse leapt from the trench to face a wall of lead, most only making a few metres before being killed or injured, some cut down before getting out of the trench. The man who could have put an early end to the carnage, Lieutenant Colonel Alexander White, the inspirational commander of the 8th Regiment, decided to join his men in the first wave and was already dead in no man's land.
Having witnessed the fate of the first charge, the second wave of 150 troopers passed the wounded and walked over the dead to take position. They too were met by a hail of bullets. Somehow, through the firestorm, one of the men had made it to the right of the Turkish trenches and planted a marker flag. The report of the flag had reached back to command. As the West Australians of the 10th Light Horse Regiment reached the front line for their turn, their commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel Noel Brazier, sought to have the action called off. Making his way to the command post, Brazier urged the brigade commander, Lieutenant Colonel Jack Antill, that continuing the attack would be pointless. Armed with information that the marker flag had been seen near the Turkish trench, Antill ordered Brazier to push on. A crestfallen Brazier announced to his men, I'm sorry lads, but the order is to go. Facing almost certain death, the men of the 10th wished each other farewell. 23-year-old trooper Harold Rush turned to the man next to him and said, Goodbye, Cobber. God bless you. The third wave suffered the fate of the first two. Harold Rush was killed charging in that third wave. Inexplicably, in the confusion at the neck, a partial fourth wave jumped from the trenches to the right of the Australian position, only to be swept away. The New Zealanders took Chonuk Bear in ferocious fighting, but after being reinforced by the British, the Turks regained the summit. The British landed at Suvla Bay, but made little progress. The Australian infantry at Lone Pine was the only gain. The August offensive was a costly failure. The campaign ended in December 1915 with the evacuation of the peninsula. <laughs> 